You're watching Reality Check as the Taliban advance across Afghanistan with lightning speed, taking province after province. The world and the people of Afghanistan are watching with alarm. Will this be a return to the Taliban of old, or has the Taliban, as per its own claims, turned a new leaf? Joining me to attempt to answer some of those questions is uh, Mohammad Sohail Shaheen. He's a Taliban spokesperson who joins us uh, from Doha in Qatar, uh, where the Taliban actually has a political office and uh, has spokespersons like Mr. Shaheen. Thank you very much indeed, Sohail Shaheen, uh, for talking Thank to you. us on NDTV. Mm -hmm. Now, just to understand from your point of view, we are seeing the situation on the ground change very, very fast in Afghanistan. Uh, the world or the general estimates is that you already control about two thirds of territory and you've seized close to almost 12 provincial capitals. Is that, is that your estimate as well? That that's, that's how much territory you now control? Yes. Uh, we, we control uh, almost 90% of the territory of Afghanistan and about uh, 15 uh, provincial centers 90%. of the country ha ha have fallen to us. Yes, that's the status quo. And what about Kabul? Do you believe Kabul is, is likely to fall under your control? And if so, by when? Uh, we have capability to take Kabul, but uh, we gave uh, way to negotiation to succeed, to reach a peaceful solution. Mm. Uh, even before, uh, though we had capability to uh, to capture provincial centers mm. and districts, uh, but uh, we were giving the chance uh, to negotiation because our policy is okay. reaching a peaceful solution of the Afghan issue. Because in that uh, case, we can uh, have a durable peace in the country. So that is our policy. But unfortunately, mm. on the day of Eid, the, the head of the Kabul administration, mm. He announced a six-month military operation against us and then launched huge mass offensive uh, in Baghdad against our position in Helmand provinces. That uh, started the uh, falling of okay. provinces uh, to us when we reacted uh, to the offensive. No, no, but Mr. Shaheen, surely it's the other way around. It was, it was the Taliban that launched a huge offensive the moment the Americans announced their pullout. You, uh, if, you launched uh, the offensive. If you see, uh, the, uh, the falling of the provinces started after uh, the uh, uh, military strategy or military operation mm. for six months were announced by Ashraf Ghani, the head of the Kabul administration okay. on the heat day. Before okay, that, that, there yeah. was, an, uh, we were restraining our forces to take provincial centers. And secondly, about uh, your other question that we launched offensive, mm. no. Because we are here in Afghanistan, you are far away, only seeing the reports which are Okay, uh, many of the reports are uh, against us and biased uh, to us. Okay. The ground reality is that uh, we started uh, the negotiation. We wanted to have the negotiation with them, but unfortunately, okay, they were they not, not willing to, to release our prisoners as per the uh, Doha agreement. Okay, but let me ask you this. Because on one hand, you say that you want peace and you want negotiations and that this is a new Taliban. But if you look at what is happening on the ground, there are multiple reports of your forces committing atrocities. For example, 22, and we'll play the video, it went viral, 22 Afghan soldiers who surrendered were executed by the Taliban. This was in Faryab province in, in mid-July. This is uh, what uh, I say the uh, propaganda, the baseless report. Mm. That is why I told you, you are only receiving the but baseless uh, report. No, no, but sir, there's a video that, uh, of this. We, that we, we do is a fake video. It is too far uh, spliced with each other. There is uh, no case of 
uh, our people yes. killing those who have surrendered to us. It is the, nothing such happened. What about what about the killing of the of the comedian? There was this, you know, he was a comedian. He was uh, also, I mean, he was a police official who who also was a comedian. He made people laugh. Again, he was captured and executed. The video is on the screen. Uh, first, uh, he was not comedian. He was commander, Arbati militia co commander. Mm. Uh, secondly, uh, that he was not uh, um, arrested or detained by the security uh, forces of the Islamic Emirate or the police of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Right. He was, yes, uh, arrested by some unscrupulous person affiliated uh, with us. But that person is arrested, he is on trial now. The person who killed them were not Taliban? No, they, they were not official Taliban, the, 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 uh, the police of Taliban who arrested them. Because we have the policy, we have uh, uh, announced uh, uh, amnesty to all that they can live their life. But they, they, if there is anyone such case who against our policy is uh, taking uh, the law into his hand, and when something he is uh, uh, he is arrested and tried in the court, and he will see uh, his pan uh, pan what, punishment. What, what about the media? Because again, I've seen statements from your leader saying you you know freedom of expression, but as you may know, a journalist from India, Danish Siddiqui, was was killed by your fighters. You can't say by our fighters. And, and uh, you, you 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 will uh, ask him why he. Uh, didn't uh, coordinate with us when he, uh, we have uh, announced uh, to journalists uh, not once, many times, if they want to, uh, to come to our areas, to uh, places, please coordinate with us, we will provide you security. But he was embedded with the security forces of Kabul. Uh, there was no difference uh, whether they are uh, the security po po policemen or yes. uh, militias or uh, the soldiers of uh, Kabul are a journalist among them. So uh, no, no, he, was he was killed a, during, a during, during, he was killed during cross firing. So it is not known uh, he was killed by whose firing. No, but he was, he was, after he was killed, he was mutilated further. No, no that, that uh, I, that allegation I have already rejected uh, to three times. Uh, Okay. Uh, it is not our policy. It is not our policy. If it is uh, mutilated by the Kabul security forces for our uh, malignment, uh, for uh, giving us a bad name, so, uh, that uh, is uh, possible. This uh, up to them. Ask them. But so our forces are specially ordered. They will not uh, mutilate anyone because it is against the rule of Islam. So you are saying that, that we can and plan to mut mutilate the body of uh, dead body of anyone. Okay, so but you're saying that if journalists like, even like myself, were to approach you and say, we want to come to your areas and we want to film with what, and you would allow that? Yes, yes, uh, uh, we have uh, programs for all journal journalists around the world uh, when uh, they want to come to our areas uh, to file their reports. Uh, they uh, can come; they are welcomed. To even we have. Uh, announced that uh, media outlets can open their uh, branches in our areas to see the ground realities with their own uh, eyes. Okay, but tell me, Mr. Shahin, because this is again all part of what many believe is an attempt by you to make over. For example, again, we've seen statements by our leaders saying women will have rights to work, they will have the right to education. But there have been reports, Wall Street Journal most recently, about how your own Taliban leaders have actually passed edicts that women, young women, will be forcibly married off to Taliban commanders. Widows will be forcibly married off to your Taliban commanders. Not at all. It is not uh, uh, correct. It is a fake uh, propaganda. That is why I am saying uh, you are only receiving the fake uh, videos, the fa uh, fake reports. Uh, that was uh, one of the uh, Vice Spirit uh, message of uh, NDA's uh, okay. uh, person in Badakhshan who spread this. 
and groups and also give the, that uh, to media outlets. Uh, it is, uh, we have reputed, I reputed this, as Abiyullah Mujahid has as a reported, and also Dr. Naeem reported, who are uh, the spokesmen, that uh, it is uh, wrong, it is against the rules of Islam to so force a person now. to force a person to give uh, his daughter mm. uh, in marriage. How it is, it, it is not possible. We rejected this, our le leaders have rejected this, so it is a fake, uh, something fake. Okay, well, but but about about women though because because when you were in ruling afghanistan uh, between 96 to 2001 uh, women were banned from education they were banned from working they couldn't leave home without a male escort there were public stonings and executions will that continue if uh, you come first, back to power? Uh, 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 yes, yes at that time we were in war there was a domestic war in afghanistan but even uh, with that, uh, we had uh, a medical uh, faculty and uh, 400 uh, beaded hospital in Kabul. Do you know about that? We had a nursing school, girls nursing school mm. uh, in Jalalabad. Have you heard about that? And no. we, have, we had uh, uh, house schools all over Afghanistan. Okay. In all main cities, Kabul, Mazari Sharif, Herat, and uh, those things. But uh, no one was uh, uh, reporting about that because uh, they to... were. Okay, but you're now saying. On maligning, on maligning us and spreading propaganda against us, as it is right now. Okay, but, but aren't you worried, uh, sir, that more and more governments are saying around the world that they will not recognize you? They will not give you legitimacy or support or funds if you're seizing territory by force. I don't know um, about uh, the, the, those countries who they recognize uh, a government imposed by aircraft and bombs on the people of Afghanistan, mm. but uh, they do not uh, recognize uh, uh, a government which is uh, supported and uh, upheld by the people of Afghanistan, which uh, the people of Afghanistan won't. That okay. is uh, their, their biased uh, uh, posturing, uh, I think. But uh, uh, as I said earlier, our policy is uh, to, reach, uh, to reach a peaceful solution, uh, that uh, to have uh, an Afghan inclusive government in the country, hmm. uh, that uh, all Afghans see themselves in that government and they have par a participation. That do is you, our policy. We, we hope to reach that goal. Do you, do you, consider, do you consider India a friend or an enemy? You can uh, ask this question, I think, from the Indian officials. Are they, uh, they look uh, to the people of Afghanistan, we, the people of Afghanistan, consider them as a uh, friend or as enemy? No, I'm, if, asking, uh, I'm asking you, as, does the Taliban consider India a friend or the enemy? See, it is, uh, I think, again, up to them. If they provide uh, weapons, uh, bombs, ammunition to a moribund re regime mm. to kill the people of Afghanistan and to destroy our infrastructure and our archers, our villages, mm. that is really an act of enmity and hostility. But if uh, they... Uh, uh, do some things for the people of Afghanistan uh, that uh, is for the prosperity of the people of Afghanistan that uh, would be considered uh, otherwise, not hostility. But you have been talking to India. The Taliban has been in talks with India. Uh, where, where? When? Well, you would know better than me, but from what we hear, there have been negotiations, perhaps in Doha, perhaps elsewhere? No, about the, those reports I have heard, I uh, can't confirm that because on the basis of my information, such things uh, has uh, not happened. But of course, yesterday, uh, there was a meeting in which also a delegation from India um, had uh, participated hmm. and our delegation also participated in that. Uh, meeting and that uh, 
me meeting was uh, uh, by uh, uh, those countries yes. who are supporting uh, uh, peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan. You know, there was uh, three meetings here yes. in Doha on 10th and, uh, and 11th was the right. Trika meeting and on 12th was there was uh, a meeting of uh, different countries and which uh, also India, Indian delegation so, had uh, taken uh, part. And what would you say, Mr. Shaheen, to, to the claim made by India and many countries that you are backed by Pakistan. You are a force backed by the I, Pakistan government, by the Pakistani ISI, the spy agency. I, I think it is baseless uh, uh, re, uh, allegation as ever. And uh, when it is raised from uh, your country, it is uh, more originating from your uh, rivalry with Pakistan, not, on, uh, not based on the ground reality in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, how it is possible that uh, uh, if the, there were not the people of Afghanistan uh, resisting against occupation, that another country far away or a few people can fight uh, against uh, uh, invasion and a superpower mm. and other more than 50 countries for 20 years and still mm. they grow, their popularity grow. So that is the people of Afghanistan. Okay. So, but but you know, I, you, I think you, that, that is not you, based on realities, rather uh, they are, I think, uh, politically motivated. But opposition. you know, you, you say that and yet you have shuras, Taliban shuras, all based in Pakistan, named after Pakistani towns, the Quetta shura, the Peshawar shura. Uh, but you say it's baseless. Let me just ask you in conclusion though, sir. That yeah, but but uh, have, have you seen how there, do you is the, the, if there is a, a, a Quetta Shura, Beit Shura, there will be a building there. Okay. There will be a place there. Last uh, question. There is only name, name, only name. Okay. La uh, last can you show me where is the, it, uh, the Shura located, in which street, in which road, okay. on which road? Last, yes. <laughs> okay. last question, Mr. Shaheen, that the fear is if you return, once again, Afghanistan will become safe haven for terrorist groups like, like Daesh, ISIS, Al-Qaeda. I think uh, uh, the Daesh, they uh, surrendered. Uh, it is a fact, uh, yeah, uh, last year in Jalalabad and uh, Ningrahar and also in Kunar, uh, they were about 2,600 to the Kabul administration. They are now in Kabul with the Kabul administration. They, uh, there are reports that they are using them in some horrendous uh, incidents. Uh, but when we are uh, there in Afghanistan as we are, right. and we have uh, uh, the government uh, in our hand, uh, there is our commitment on the basis of Doha agreement. That so you will not, we will allow not allow anyone, any group, any individual to use the soil of Afghanistan against any country. That is our commitment. It is our clear policy. Okay. And we consider it, it is part of our national in, interest. Okay, that's, that's a commitment we will, that you've made on, on television and publicly and we'll certainly yeah. hold you to it. But thank you very much yeah. indeed. Thank you very thank much you. indeed, Sohail Shaheen, for... Uh, for joining us and taking all our questions. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Okay. That was Sohail Shaheen there, the Taliban spokesperson. Uh, we've got a panel lined up. Uh, we've got uh, Lot Fullah, Najaf Zada, head of Tolo News TV, the main big channel in Afghanistan. Suhasini Haider, National and Diplomatic Affairs Editors, The Hindu is with us. Uh, Amar Sina, uh, Ambassador to Afghanistan. His apologies, by the way, for all of you for keeping you waiting. But uh, let me just ask you, Lord Fuller, that what do you make of this new supposedly moderate Taliban? Uh, do, are you convinced of it? Uh, is the ground reality different? And also, are you are you worried about your own excellent, you know, news channel you've run for all these years with them advancing? I think the country is really. Uh worried, uh, the Taliban uh, uh, taking uh, at least three major cities in the past day is very, very alarming. Uh, they are uh, getting closer to uh, Kabul. I think the people of Kabul are very worried. 
the people of the provinces, they have come to Kabul in, in thousands. Um, uh, if you go to around town, you see uh, parks are filled with IDPs, uh, uh, displaced people. Um, so it's really, really, I've, you know, I've never seen something like this in Kabul in the past 20 years. Mm. So um, uh, I, I think the morale uh, is very low. Um, and uh, there is uh, a meeting going on right now um, at the presidential palace. Uh, we should expect President Ghani to make some announcements in a couple of hours but to see if that's going to help a Taliban uh, stop attacking the city. But, but Lord Fuller, about my question about do you think that the Taliban, as we just heard the spokesperson claim, oh, we're, you know, media can report what they want. All, do you believe any of that? And are you also worried about your own news operations? I think dozens of media outlets in Taliban-controlled districts and cities have been shut down in the past uh, in the past weeks. Um, right. And in some in some in some places, we know that they went and uh, demanded censorship and and given them editorial directions. Uh, which is certainly, which is certainly something that the Afghan media is not very familiar with. Um, uh, we, we are very proud of uh, press freedom in our country, uh, which is quite uh, unique. Um, uh, I think, I think that is at risk. That's at great risk. Uh, we are in a situation now that we don't know what's going to happen in 24 hours. My God! But at the moment, though, your your journalists are out there reporting and are they able to report? Are they okay? We've shut down bureaus in the provinces, but in Kabul, yes, we're fully operational. Uh, we produce um, 30 plus news stories a day. We invite 3,000 people a month on our program. So, so those things do, do happen. Um, uh, uh, I think, um, as I said, uh, the cloud of uncertainty is, 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 is everywhere, it's so thick. Uh, that uh, it can overshadow everything. So um, I think the visibility is very, very limited. Right. Very, very concerning. So Hasini, what do you make of this with this complete almost disconnect between what the, you know, particularly the political faces of the Taliban in Doha and elsewhere versus what's happening on the ground? I, I think it is extremely worrying, uh, Srinivasan, and I think from what Mr. Shaheen said, and of course you asked him all the uh, questions that uh, are on so many people's minds about what a Taliban regime really in Afghanistan is going to mean for the country, for its people, uh, as well as for its neighbors. Um, but he didn't answer the basic question, which is why is the Taliban attempting to take the country by force? Why is there this, uh, this violent takeover happening at all? If everything is so um, uh, you know, simple and uh, the, the regime in power is unpopular, and only the Taliban is popular, then why is there this need for uh, violence at all? Uh, and the answer is that the Taliban in Doha has been, uh, uh, has been speaking in, in, in a very different voice from the Taliban on the ground. Mr. Shaheen now says that he's in control. Uh, but just a few weeks ago, when asked about atrocities by commanders, he it's not all control. Um, the, the truth is that the Taliban is on the ground very purposefully taking over territory hmm. by force with an idea to push the Ghani government into some kind of a surrender. Um, and it is being helped by the fact that talks continue in Doha, that every country wants to engage the Taliban in Doha for some reason. Right. Why is no country, and, I, and, and India is included in this, making the basic point that no talks can happen with the Taliban until there is a ceasefire, until violence ends. Right. That, is the, that, that, is, that is the way that... Uh, uh, you know, civilized society runs. It cannot sure. be that I will continue to shoot people until or While kill people you, yeah, or and, maim and people or talking. execute soldiers. Right. Um, and, and, and the rest of the international community just sits there mutely. And I will add, including India, that okay. is sending delegations to Doha um, uh, to, to talk while, um, uh, while they do this on the ground. Amar Sena, you, you agree that India should just suspend talks no, until the violence Taliban puts down guns or difficult sorry uh, ambassador Sina, i think you're on mute uh, if you could just and well no i'm happy to hear this you know what is happening really is uh, yes worrying uh, worrying is an understatement uh, but of course i heard his uh, comments to you 
uh, it was a dissimulation, a masterly dissimulation uh, and half truths. Uh, he didn't answer any uh, specific question. All the inconvenient questions, either he didn't have an answer uh, or he uh, blamed somebody else. He blames the government for killing its own people, destroying its building, etc., etc. But the fact is what Swasni is saying, that they are determined to take power by force. And what you are seeing is not really a civil war. In fact, we tend to downplay it when we say that this is a violation of human rights or this is a, a, a civil war happening. It's neither of those. Uh, this is absolute genocide and this is a full-fledged invasion of Afghanistan which is going to destruct the nation state. Uh, and mark my words, and they're not going to stop at that. Uh, rest, of course, is, is all debatable. You know, Now, mm. s two months ago, he was talking differently about India and what all India has done and how they would want India to continue. Today, he says that we are supporting the government uh, to kill its own people. Uh, and if, and to your question, uh, whether uh, India is an enemy or a friendly country, he sidestepped it. He says, ask Afghan people. Mm. Well, I think uh, polls after polls over the years have asked that question. Sure. And I think the answer is very clear. Mm. So I won't, I will take it with a great pinch of salt. Sure. But the question is, if he's telling the truth, then obviously they have Doha office has lost, lost control on the battleground completely. Okay. Uh, so obviously concessions are being made to the wrong people. We are all very, very worried and watching from India and around the world, but we are out of time. Thank you all so much uh, for joining us on Reality Check. Thank you so much for watching tonight.